Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren from Lauren and the Books. And today I'm going to be going through my April wrap up. These are all the books that I read in April. It is merely the 27th of April. It's Minnie's birthday today. Happy birthday, Minnie. She's 10 years old, even though she looks like a beautiful little kitten. She's an old lady cat. Um, it's the 27th of April, so there are still a few days of April left, during which I'm hoping to finish seven of the books that I have been reading but haven't yet finished. So I'm going to go over those at the end, but I'm going to start with the books that I read at the beginning of the month, as I always do. And the first book I read was a buddy read I did, and that was The Girl with the, in the Red Coat by Kate Hamer. This was sent to me by a Favour and Favour for review, and I'm very thankful to Favour and Favour for sending it to me because I quite enjoyed this. So I did this as a buddy read. This is um, described as a thriller, and it's told from two different perspectives. Um, one from the point of view of Carmel, an eight-year-old girl, and um, the other point of view from her mother, Beth. Um, Carmel and Beth go to a, um, a storytelling festival, and Carmel and Beth get separated, and from then onwards, um, Carmel gets abducted, and you uh, hear about it from um, Carmel's point of view and from Beth's point of view. And... I enjoyed this. I thought it was pretty good. I gave it three and a half stars. Um, I'm not normally a half star girl, but I thought it was better than three stars, but not quite as good as four stars. So that's how I got there. Scientific. Um, I really liked this. I thought it told a very different sort of abduction story to the one that I'm used to, and I quite enjoyed it about that. So yeah, I liked I liked the multiple perspectives, and in particular, I liked Carmel's multiple. I love a book with multiple perspectives perspectives where you know something that the other um, reader doesn't know about but let me tell you the abduction bit even though I knew she was going to be abducted that is not a spoiler by the way that is like what happens um, I felt sick when I was reading it like it was I knew it was going to happen and I knew it felt so real but I just felt awful just reading it so it was really I thought for like I really enjoyed Kate Hamer's writing and yeah I thought it was very good a few of us girls in the um, in the group chat when we were reading this we all said like Although this is marketed as a thriller, I wouldn't say it was a thriller. I'd say it's thrilling to read and it was a page turner. But for me, this wasn't a thriller book. But I still really liked it and I gave it three and a half stars. But I think this would be perfect as a holiday read. Like, this would be, this is just actually, like, you just, I read this so quickly and you wouldn't be able to, but if you, if you like to sit on the beach and read or like to sit and read, then this is definitely a page turner for, for you guys. So that is the first book I read. The next book I read, God, this all feels like a million years ago, was Eleanor by Jason Gurley, and I really love this. I gave this four stars. So, how do I even begin to describe what happens in this book? I was telling David about it, and he was like, oh, I said, oh, I'm really, really liking my book. And he said, oh, why, what's it about? Well, when I tried to explain it to him, let me tell you, I could have gone on for about seven years. There's so much going on in this book. So, it tells the story mainly of two Eleanors. So there's Eleanor, who is the young girl, who is probably like the main Eleanor in this book. And then her mother, Agnes, and Agnes's mother, who is also called Eleanor. So it sort of like unwinds. You start with the grandmother, Eleanor, um, and read a bit about her. And then you read a bit about Agnes, and, um, and then you get onto this Eleanor. So I've read it thinking, this is a family saga, and I love this family saga shit. I love a family saga. But then some sort of like sci-fi, um, time travelling shit happens. And this was just really good. I really, really loved it. And the cover is beautiful. And I really want to read it again, even though I've already finished it. And I just thought it was really, really good. And I really, really loved it. Ah! But as I said, I, I, wouldn't even, I couldn't even begin to tell you what is in this. Um, it's written beautiful. And I really want to check out more by him. And it's got like magical realism in it, as well as modern life. And I just thought it was perfect. And I loved the ending and basically like the whole layout of the book and um, I just really really enjoyed it very good well done Jason Gurley I haven't got a table so I have to put these over here then Jonathan started now I'm not going to go on and on about Jonathan because I have done forever but these are the books I've read in Jonathan I'm not going to sum these up I will link my Jonathan wrap up um, down below if you want to check that out but during Jonathan I read uh, Men Explain Things to Me and other essays by Rebecca Solnit Skylight by David Hare, We Need New Names by Novala Balawayo, Bobcat and Other Stories by Rebecca Lee, Snapshots of a Girl by Belden Sezan, and The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil by Stephen Collins, and A Year of Living Danishly by Helen Russell. So those are the seven books that I read during Jonathan. Let me skip my notes. The next book I read was When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. Now this is a book that I had planned to read during Jonathan, but I didn't get around to it. This is a book about, it is a a uh, non-fiction book about Paul Kalanithi, he has written it himself, um, about him who, he is a neurosurgeon, and he discovers that he has um, very late stage um, 
cancer which he is not going to recover from. So this tells the tale of him becoming a doctor and then him becoming a patient and then it's no secret that he he dies, the cancer kills him, and um, the epilogue is written by his wife, which is the most heartbreaking thing I've ever read. Like, it was just really sad. It was really, really sad. Now, this book, I really enjoyed it. Now, that's weird to say that you enjoyed a book about someone's life and then eventual death, but hey, if that's not what every book's about, what is it? But I was really impressed by how much background and feeling and storyline was managed to get into this. It was heartbreaking. It opens with Paul's diagnosis and then goes sort of like time travels back to him training as a doctor and then gets to the point where he discovers he has cancer and then that and then as I said the epilogue is written by his wife. Um, I almost stopped remembering that this was real life when I was reading it like this I was just reading <coughs> I work with doctors excuse me <coughs> my job I, I, I look after a team of diabetes doctors where I um, where I work at the hospital and um, I deal with doctors a lot and I sort of was reading this thinking, oh, this is really interesting, even though this is set in America, even though this is from America. Um, I was like, oh, this must be similar to what my doctors have gone through, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I almost, forgot the, I almost forgot that he was going to eventually die and this was going to be a really, really sad thing. He is a brilliant writer for someone who is a doctor. He is an amazing, amazing writer. In my head, doctors are very scientific and things. And it, it, awfully, I didn't think that they would have it in them to write such a beautiful book, but it really was beautiful. It was hard to read, especially the epilogue, but... I really, really lo loved it, and I think it will stay with me for a really long time. So that is the other book I read. And then the last book I finished was the book that we read for my online book club, which was Our Endless Number Days by Claire Fuller. So book club, mixed discussion about that, mixed views about this. I really like this and gave it four stars, but a few people in book club who gave it two stars, one of which I've never known how to give two stars to a book ever. Okay. <laughs> Some people really hated this. So this, this tells the story of Peggy, who is a, um, a young girl whose father, uh, they're living quite a, in, a, in a family, her, her father and her mother live in London, uh, and then one day her father takes her to um, some woods in a completely different country, France I think it is, I can't even be sure where the, where the woods are, and <coughs> tells her that the world ended and that they now live in this, no it must be Germany, Die Hütte, they call it Die Hütte. Die Hütte. Die Hütte. Um, and yeah, and that the world's ended and that she's the only person, uh, those two are the only people that survived and they've got to carry on living in this wood. Now, it was mad. Like, it was, the, uh, the, I was so frustrated because I couldn't believe she believed him, but then I kept, had to keep remem reminding myself that she is a child, even though she, her voice sounded so grown up. <coughs> um, and I was really, really compelled to read it. And as, as more and more happened, like the last 50 pages, I couldn't put it down. Um, I thought about it a lot when I, when I wasn't reading it. I thought it was written beautifully and the description in the book was just incredible. Like sometimes I actually felt like I was looking at a bloody painting of the <laughs> of the de Hutter because the de Hutter. Oh de Hutter. De Hutter. Got... <coughs> David, I've got such a tickly cop. <coughs> um and I, it was really transporting and I felt like I was there. So I can't really tell you much because I don't really want to ruin stuff because there's so much in here that sort of leads so much intrigue but I was really impressed with this and although a lot of people didn't particularly like it in book club we had a really long discussion about it probably the best discussion we've ever had in book club so very very impressed with this I don't know if I'd read it again like I'm happy to have read it and thought yeah I really enjoyed that four stars I don't think I'd read it again but it was really beautiful and I enjoyed it so those are all the books that I finished. That was 11 books. Now, as I said at the beginning of this vid, um, I have seven books on the go and it is merely the 27th of April. So I've still got three days, 28, 29, 30, three full days um, left of reading. Now, David and I are actually moving house this weekend. Huh. Um, more on that later. Um, and I don't know how much reading I'm going to get, but I am like 88% through some of these books. Booksies? Yeah. <laughs> some of these books. There is a chance to finish. So I'll show you once I've had another cough. <coughs> I will show you these seven books here that I am part way through. Ugh. So the first one is uh, Rebel of the Sands. This is an ARC copy from the publisher by um, Alwyn Hamilton, I think her name is. That's bad, I've forgotten. I'm sure it's by Alwyn Hamilton. So Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Ham Hamilton. I'm about 30% through and quite enjoying it. <coughs> Emma by Jane Austen is the classic that I was buddy reading during the genre -thon. Um As I said in my genre -thon wrap up, um, I don't think. Um, I don't think classics during readathons work very well, and that's why I sort of had to take a bit of a slow down on this. So that hasn't been finished, but I will finish it at some point. 
this Pride and Prejudice has been going on for ages because it's so big I can't carry it around with me and I want to read it when I'm in bed but then when I'm in bed I want to read the other thing that I'm reading all excited and because I've read Pride and Prejudice before although I enjoy it it's not like the page turner that other books are so but I am like 88% through this I've got a really small amount left so that will be finished uh, Nordicana, uh, 100 Icons of Scandi Culture and Nordic Cool. Um, this is like a little coffee table book. I am a little bit way of the way through that. That won't take me long to read either. I've got some really nice bookmarks in here and all my scabby ones are in the books I'm reading at the moment. Then, My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. I was reading this as a buddy read with um, Francesca from um, Utterly Uncool. And do you know what? I don't think this is... I'm frightened for the lynching, but this isn't like the best thing I've ever read and... I've been led to believe it was the best thing I was ever going to read. So um, I may do a review on this because I just feel a bit blur about it. Oh God, I'm so frightened even saying that. Um, but yeah, I'm almost, I'm like 85% through that, so that will finish too. And then these are the two books I'm reading at the moment. I am buddy reading. Uh, we are all completely beside ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler with Leanne from uh, The Anne Rose. Uh, and really enjoying this. For, it, it was a bit slow to get kicked off. And then once I realised what the story was about, I was like, oh shit, that is really, really good. So really much enjoying this. And a surprising one, uh, The Nightingale by Christine Hanna. Looking at that book front cover, I was like, God, that looks like something my mother would read. Um, but this is really good. It's about a set of two sisters who are in the Second World War uh, in France. And um, one sister is sort of like... Uh, sort of putting up with the war basically her husband's gone away to fight and she's just given up her house so that the Germans can move in and just sort of putting up and the other sister's like very wants to fight against the Germans and he's doing what she can to be involved in sort of like anti-Nazi regimes and things um, I feel like this is a really good feminist book of why, when I read about war you don't often read about the people left behind like the women and how they have to carry on with their lives and things like that and that is what this is about and both the characters although one seems weaker than the other um, both characters are strong women and um, I'm enjoying it, I really am enjoying it and I, d I didn't think I would at all. So I'm about a, th a third of the way through that as well, so enjoying that. So those are the seven books that I'm hoping to sort of get on with over the next few days. Um, it may happen, it might not, but the 11 books as I said um, that I read earlier, the best one this read this month, hmm, God, I've read some really good ones. Oh, of course, A Year of Living Danishly, the audiobook by Helen Russell, I love that, and Skylight. Um, by David Hare. They were the two my two five star books from Jonathan. So those are the, the two books, the best books I've read this year. Now, news. David and I are moving house this weekend. So it's been ongoing for a long time. We're moving slowly, slowly things into it. We are moving into a new flat. Um, still in the so the Mickey Mouse room will not be coming with us. Now this is very sad. And I'm very sad, aren't I, David? You are very sad. I actually considered not moving because of this wall. Now, when David and I moved into this flat, David wasn't sure if he wanted to move into this flat, and I said to him, you can have a Mickey Mouse wallpaper if we moved in to cement the deal. It did cement the deal. And now we're moving into a flat that doesn't have a Mickey Mouse wallpaper wall. It's still beautifully decorated, and I'm hoping to have a little library corner to film in. But guys, I wanted to warn you that this is the last video during which I'll be sat in front of this Mickey Mouse wall, which is very sad. But all good things have to come to an end, and I hope you can enjoy to stay with me on my channel while we find a new background together that we all enjoy. <laughs> I do feel really sad about it though, you know. I oh, know you do. It's sad, but we've all got to grow up sometimes, guys. But anyway... That is my April wrap up. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all again soon with another booktube video. Say bye to the wallpaper. Bye! Bye, wallpaper! <laughs>